in the midst of all the crazy that's been going on around the world, I decided to get the dogs outside and just get some fresh air. And hopefully it brightens our moods as it usually does. So come along. It is so muddy out here. These dogs are gonna be absolutely covered. Oh, this is gonna be crazy. Okay, so today I wanted to offer a few things um, that I think you should teach your kids when you're bringing home a new GSP puppy. Um, now these are things that you could probably use for any breed, but since I own GSPs, I'll make it GSP specific. Um, if you're getting a different breed, just know that they're probably pretty similar. Some of them might be a little bit different, but overall, these are great tips, things to teach your children, especially young children, when you're bringing home a new puppy, and maybe especially if it's their first puppy and they've never learned how to interact with the dog before. Um, so stay tuned, and I will offer a few different things that you can teach them. So first things first is um, you should teach your kids to make sure that they keep their face out of the dog's face. Um, it's important to give a dog their personal space. Getting too close could give them an instinct um, to kick in that uh, they would instinctually bite their face, which we would hate to see happen. So I would just make sure that you teach your kids first to stay out of a dog's face. Next thing I would teach them is to stay out of the dog's bed. I know it is so tempting, especially when they're super tiny and their bags are so big. Our daughter used to have such a hard time staying out of the bed. She wanted to climb in there and read in books and all sorts of things, but it is so important that a dog can have a personal space that they can retreat to. And the bed is a place that they can count on that is theirs, that they're not gonna be bothered. They can have a little bit of downtime. Um, they can rest without having anything bothering them and so you just want to teach your kids to stay out of the dog's bed so that the dog knows that that is their safe space that they can retreat to when they get overstimulated or overwhelmed. Next thing you want to teach a kid is what we always refer to as nice touches. So a lot of kids don't know their own strength. They can be a little bit aggressive. Um, and so we wanted to make sure we teach the kid nice touches and how to touch the dog nicely so that we're not pulling their tail, we're not hitting them, we're not squeezing them too tightly, which can be so tempting when they're so cute and you just want to snuggle them. Um, but we always use the term nice touches. So anytime um, our daughter, especially because she was our youngest, was overly aggressive with them, we would just remind her nice touches. We give nice touches to the dog and we would just teach her to pat the dog in the normal direction of hair growth and just cuddle him that way and just remind her over and over we have to give nice touches so we don't hurt the doggy um, and eventually she got it so nice touches is a good thing to talk about um, next I would teach your children to stay calm Kids are obviously easily excitable and dogs typically are gonna match your energy. So if you are excited, the dog is gonna get excited, which is actually one of my favorite things about a dog um, because they don't even know why they're excited. They just get excited because you are. Um, and that's a lot of fun, but kids are often very loud, very excitable, they jump up and down. And what that can cause your dog to do is match that excitement. So they're gonna start jumping up and down. And especially if you have small kids, they might knock that child over, step on them while they're getting excited um, and just cause harm to the child overall. So we always try to teach our kids to stay calm because the dog is gonna match their energy and we want them to match the calm. As calm as a GSP can be.
Next thing that I suggest you teach your kids is to always keep their hands down by their side. Um, it is an instinct for us to throw our hands up in the air when a dog comes near us because we get nervous and we're trying to protect our limbs and our fingers and we think by putting them up high that's what's going to actually protect them but all it does is it causes a dog to actually jump up towards your hands which means that they could possibly knock over the child, trample them on their way down and just cause harm to the child. Um, so it's our instincts to throw our hands up in the air when the dog gets near and to get all nervous and tense. Um, but it's really important to teach them to make it flat down by their side, teach them to glue their arms to their side anytime the dog comes near, and that way the dog will eventually, um, isn't gonna jump up at them, the dog will just typically sniff around them and won't bother them um, as much as if they threw their arms up in the air. So teach your kids to glue their arms down towards their side, and hopefully that keeps them a little bit safer. Next is we teach, we taught our kids that they had to eat their snacks and any of their foods at the table or up at the kitchen counter, which was a little bit higher, or in their room when they're old enough to do so without supervision. Um, because if they walk around with snacks in their hand, inevitably that snack is going to become the dog snack because dogs will sniff that out and it will become theirs because they're typically much stronger than your children. So I would teach your child that if they're going to have a snack, they need to sit at the table or sit at the kitchen counter or head to their room if they're old enough to be alone and that will keep their snack safe and keep the dog safe as well just in case the snack is something that the dog shouldn't have. Okay, last tip that I have for you to teach your child, and this one is probably the hardest and it's actually one that we're still working on, is to leave a GSP's ears alone. Now, if you have, oh, he's going nuts back there. <laughs> he found a bird. Okay, so now if you have never experienced a GSP's velvety, incredible ears, you should at least touch them once because their ears are amazing and it is fairly unique to this breed, um, but their ears are so soft. So definitely pet them. Pet them gently, nicely, just like you would the rest of their body, but you wanna teach the child that we're only gonna pet them nicely um, and we don't wanna play with the insides of their ears or the underside too much because they are extremely sensitive. Now, our daughter is 10 years old, and for five years I've been trying to work on this one, so it's not easy. She finds comfort in their ears. She will rub the ears through her hand. She'll put them through her fingers. She folds them in her hand. Thankfully, our dogs are so calm that they aren't phased by her and how she plays with their ears, but sometimes they do get annoyed. So they will shake their head, meaning they want her hands off of her their ears. Um, or sometimes they will let out just a teeny tiny little growl. It's very quiet, but you can tell that they're a little bit annoyed. And so she has to listen for that to know when to stop and when they've had enough. And she really does have a hard time with it because she loves their ears and their ears are so soft. And so I try to tell her we just need to pet them nicely like we do the rest of our bod their body. We can't sit there and fold their ears, run them through our fingers and really bug them if they're not interested. So teach your kids to leave the ears alone. Um, but just know that that one is a tough one because their ears are so amazing. So as I've mentioned before, GSPs are amazing family dogs. I don't want to deter you. These are just some tips on really any dog that you're bringing into the household to teach your children how to act around a dog, how to treat a dog, um, and that will just make them one of the best family pets that you can have. When you treat a dog aggressive, they're going to be aggressive back to you. And so we want to make sure that we're treating our dogs with gentleness and kindness. Um, we have to train our humans just like we have to train the dogs and so we want to make sure that we're each treating each other appropriately so that we can have a lot of fun like we are right now. Somewhere back there. So. This time of year is so difficult. Everything is so dead and depressing looking around here. Uh, it's hard not to be in that same state of mind. It's helps just to get out. This week has been a crazy week all over the world. So it's been really nice just to get out of the house at least and be outside. But it'd be really nice if something could be green, but 
I won't complain because I'm outside and my doggies are happy and that's all that matters.